could a new fashion craze in Korea make its way to America? Donald Trump Jr. says his father is not a racist and wait till you hear his reason. Kim Cattrall throws real shade on Sarah Jessica Parker. Chadwick Boseman is in the house. Quincy Jones has everyone talking and so does Gladys Knight and Beyonce's father Matthew Knowles. And we have our photo of the week and more so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 411, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I'm Onika McLean. Kizzy Cox is off today shaking her butt in Trinidad at the carnival. But we have a treat for you guys. We have our lovely interns. We have Ramona Shoy Parker and we have Julia, Julia Kellerman. Hey, hi guys. Hi. Hey. How are you? Welcome Julia and Ramona to the show. These are the guys. Welcome, say hi to out in TV land and podcast land. This is welcome. This is what's the four one one. So, ladies, there's babies. Yes, babies, babies, right? So Toya Wright had her baby. Uh, what's up with these crazy names? <laughs> the baby's name is Rain Ryan Russian, and then triple Ky R. yeah, Triple R, and <laughs> then and then Kylie, right? Does she have a baby yeah. too? What, yeah. What's this na baby's name? Stormy. Stormy, Stormy Weather. What's the <laughs> Webster. Webster? Stormy Webster. Yeah. Stormy with the Y or with an I? With an I. <laughs> Poor Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So if you guys are waiting on a marriage proposal from Idris Elba, you know who Idris Elba is? Yeah. Idris Elba. So he's getting married. He proposed to his girlfriend, this this woman, Sabrina Dowry. You know her? Mm -mm. You didn't? No, you got oh. So who's hot that's getting married that's your age? Like, because I know it no just happened. No one? No one? No one our age is getting married. You know? Because you're 21. Yeah. No, right? And, and 18. No. No. Okay. No. Okay. Well, it, it'll just Elba is my age and he's getting married. So good for him. Um, Donald Trump's, Donald Trump Jr. says that his father is not a racist. You want to know why? 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 You guys want to know why? Because he has rapper friends. You cannot be a racist in the racist handbook if you have a rapper friend. Did you know that? Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think that's a rule. And so do you guys know who Quincy Jones is? Yeah. Yeah, who's Quincy Jones? A music producer. He is a music <laughs> producer. Prolific music producer. Prolific Quincy Jones is telling all people's business. So um, he is causing an uproar. Um, with Marvin Gaye's family and Richard Pryor's family saying that he um, slept with Marlon Brando. You guys don't know who Marlon Brando is, right? No, but but you do, right? But you know it's so crazy. I was looking at um, a stand-up with Richard Pryor, and he did say something about him like trying, like um, a gay lifestyle. Is that crazy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can Google it. And I was like, whoa, wow. So <laughs> so the families are upset about that. So. And then we have another article, um, the president of Christ the King High School, so it's this guy, he's graduating, his mm -hmm. name is Malcolm Xavier Combs, and he wanted the back of his um, sweater, senior sweater, to say Malcolm X, okay. and they wouldn't allow it. What do you guys think of that? I think that's stupid, honestly, because yeah. that's his name. Exactly. I mean, I'm sure he was doing it because of... Malcolm the great X. Malcolm X too, but still it fits because that is his name. So you can't tell somebody they can't get their name on the back of a sweater. I think that it's because of those those um, t-shirts that they have like Nah, Rosa Parks, and We Out, ha um, Harriet. Taylor. <laughs> you see those t-shirts? No. It's, no? Oh, I am so much cooler than you guys. Where are those t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooler than they are, right guys? So, um, Kim Cattrall, you know, Sex in the City. Yeah. Let's talk about that. What's up with that? Uh, I heard Kim Cattrall uh, was saying thanks, but no thanks to Sarah Jessica Parker's condolence note. Really? Yeah. She threw her shade like that? Yeah. She threw a whole tree. But what, she threw a tree. <laughs> she threw a, but why? So Kim Cattrall's brother died, and, right. then, yeah. and then what did Sarah Jessica Parker do? Sarah Jessica Parker basically sent her condolences, and then Kim Cattrall was basically like, no, we don't want it. Yeah, so you're not my friend. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She said all that. So I guess there's no Sex in the City 3, I guess. No, no, no. I, so. <laughs> I love Carrie Fever. <laughs> what about you? Okay, cool. And <laughs> <laughs> welcome back 
to us the four. <laughs> We're having fun, and I didn't even open this <laughs> because it's it's um minors in the building. Not Julia, she could, but no, we won't. We won't do that. <laughs> do not do that. Black Panther movies coming out. You guys yes. excited? I'm very excited. Yes, I'm very excited. Yes. Excited. it's gonna be exciting. But we have a little. <clears throat> Always gotta throw the shade, right? So Roxanne Gay, you guys know who she is? Yes. She's the writer of the Black Panther yes. comics, right? She was not invited to the premiere. And I'm like, why? What do you guys think? That's shady. It is shady. Yeah, shady. So the scoop is she is um, battling with some weight issues, right? And I guess she feels horrible because they didn't invite her. So it's kind of like, alluding to the fact that it's body shaming what do you guys think about body shaming um i think that we should be past that by now like there's no reason why because she's going through something with her weight she shouldn't be a part of the premiere when she was a part of making the movie i wouldn't right. no yeah. that's shady what do you think i agree like i feel like you shouldn't be body shaming for someone just because of their weight doesn't matter. They're, they're always beautiful, like no and, matter what. And we don't body shame men. Like we sure don't. <laughs> we sure don't. don't. Men get to be at whatever. Everywhere. Like I, I yeah. don't get this. I don't get this. So colorism. So Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, wrote this book, and it's called Racism from the Eyes of a Child. Right. Mm -hmm. And what he said in the book is. Um, Beyonce, Mia Mariah Carey, Rihanna, they wouldn't be as big of stars as they are if they were darker skinned black women. Isn't that crazy? First of all, why is he talking about his daughter like that? I think that what he's probably saying, not really talking about his daughter, but talking about society. Mm -hmm. What society allows in, you know, like, like white is right, or the lighter the skin, like I think that it's just the historic racism. That light skin is better. Right, like house Negro or field Negro, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. The lighter skin is right. I think that that's what he's mainly talking about. Because what he said, I read an article and he said that when he went to Fisk University, and that's where he met Beyonce's mom, and his mom told him when he went to school, don't bring any dark skinned women back to my house. Like, so that's just the culture that he grew up in, you know, so he's just probably just conveying that. So what do you guys think about the presidential portrait? I think they look great. Yeah, do you? I do too. They were really? different. It was yeah, so different, different. from yeah. everything else, right? I wonder why he picked that guy, Kahiti Wiley, right? Yeah, right. Maybe okay. the president's trying to be hip. You know? <laughs> right, because he yeah. is hip. Yeah. You know, like, doing all this stuff with the J's and stuff. That was amazing. I, I, I loved his more than Michelle's. And I think because Michelle you used um, more monotone coloring. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that his was just so bright and right. vibrant. Yeah. And, it, and she's such a bright and vibrant person. I think that that could have been conveyed better. Right. Just, just my humble opinion. I don't know. Um, what else you guys got going on? Kendrick Lamar, he just put out a video for one of the songs for Black Panther. Uh -huh. And a British artist is claiming that he stole her ideas. Really? What's her, do you know her name? Lindy Lin something. Um, Lena Vick? Victor. Yeah, Lena Victor. So yeah. she's from Britain. So Lena Victor is saying that the, the artistry that was used in the, the videos video was, was stolen, yeah. right? It was based off of her artwork. But it doesn't seem like it seemed. What, what did you think of? What did you think of? What I don't. I didn't see any like similarities no. at all. Like I think it looks similar, but it's like it wasn't exact. So it's like, how is it stealing her artwork if she didn't create it? Like I feel like maybe it was yeah. influenced by her artwork, but. I think it was influenced by hieroglyphics, right? <laughs> That's what it seemed like. But okay, I don't know. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. We have the people versus the family, right? Okay. So recently, Princess Tatika says that she enjoyed uh, Justin Timberlake's um, tribute to the great late Prince. 
But fans were not too happy about it. They said that Prince didn't like um, holograms. using holograms and he didn't like stuff like that. And But the family was okay with it. What do you guys think about that? Like, just to, does the culture, the people, have a, a bigger say than the family members of the artists when, when they pass? Like, what do you guys think about that? Well, I feel like maybe the people were going off of what Prince says, but in general, your family's going to know the person more. So I feel like if his family was okay with it, then it should be okay. Like, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Same. I, if the family's okay with it, it shouldn't be a huge issue. Yeah. But... Mm, right, so in a similar story, right, the family of the late Dr. Martin Luther King allowed, they green-lighted a Dodge commercial. Did you guys see that at the, um, at the Super Bowl? No, I did not. No, oh my God. And the same thing happened, like, society is like, no, you know, certain things should not be touched, should not be used for advertisement and stuff like that. So what, what do you think? Like, I mean, he's Dr. King. It, a Dodge truck... <laughs> through a historical event. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, and they even said that um, Dr. King suggests that he clearly would not approve of that. So I think in that case, maybe his family made the wrong yeah. decision. Mm -hmm. Will you guys <laughs> comment below and let us know what you think? Because I think the Dodge and Dr. King is a little too far. Yeah. Prince, yeah. you know, and Justin Timberlake, that's, that's okay. They're both artists, they both sing and dance. The in my opinion, Dr. King's movement was not about selling things. Yeah, it was about, <laughs> right. it was about making changes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now, let me tell you ladies what's going on in Korea. K-pop. <laughs> So there's this men beauty revolution going on. Like They're like launching all these new beauty supplies and you know stuff for skincare for men and stuff because Korean men apparently take take beauty and looking good very seriously what do you guys think about that I mean there's nothing wrong with that yeah, nothing wrong with that <laughs> you men like, gotta look beautiful too. you want men to look beautiful when do if we? that's what they want then I know that men in, in America we they get their nails done now and their feet done now but like, what about facials and massages and and all the stuff that we do to get beautified? Like getting their eyelashes done, their eyebrows done. Like it's getting. I like, know some men who get their eyebrows done. Really? Yeah. Your boyfriend? Think, does your boyfriend do that? <laughs> I don't have a boyfriend right now, but. <laughs> what about your boyfriend, Julia? Does he do That's that? That's becoming a thing now, though, for men to get their eyebrows. <laughs> it really is. They get their eyebrows done now. I feel so sorry for y'all. Huh? What? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? I mean, I don't see a problem with that. You want to get dolled up? Why not? Don't, <laughs> don't come men. to me with eyelashes, blush, and all that. Because what now. if they start getting, what if they start doing contouring and stuff? So then they don't even look like themselves. All right. That's to the next level. That's, I but don't the think levels already always go to the next level. That's the thing. We accept it here, and then it's going here. No? No? What do no. you guys think? I mean, I think that sometimes you can go a little too far. Like, now I see guys in the nail salon and they get, like, their nails polished. Like, it's clear, but it's still polished. But it's not it's clear. Terrible. But what if you saw a guy just sitting at home on a Saturday night, like, painting their nails clear? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> show downtown Manhattan numerous fashion designers coming here to show their work some are new and some have been around the block for a while but what I can say is I'm thrilled and excited about what they're going to show today fashion designers beautiful models wonderful people and an entrepreneurial movement for a cause Oh, I'm Dion Williams. Uh, I own D. Williams Public Relations Group, but I'm the creator producer of uh, Emerge Fashion Show here in New York. And with it, 
Emerge began. It only began four seasons ago, so two years ago, when we started in a small a studio in Chelsea, and now it's grown to be over 400, 500 people, designers from across the world, and media from all over, like what's the 411, so we're just happy to be here. We're looking forward to growing more. So what's next? Oh, well, but if you go to EmergeFashionNYC.com, we want to do more programs, so even if you're a designer and can't and are not selected for the six, you can we can have we have resources and workshops and classes and things like that. So you got to look for that on the website. I love the entrepreneurial aspect of what you put together. Where did that all come from? How how were you inspired to create such a wonderful event? Yeah, and, and I had a friend. Her name is Terry Stevens. She's a designer. She was on Project Runway season six, and when she was done with the show, she was doing a lot of shows and I just thought they weren't the quality that these talented designers need to be even though you can't be in Lincoln Center you can still showcase and give yourself and give them a national platform so that's how it started. I'm here with India de Beaufort. How are you, girl? I'm really, really well. Excited, nervous, good. You look fantastic. Thank you. I'm wearing one of the pieces from my collection, so it's a hint of things to come. This piece here looks extremely theatrical to me, like you could be on stage. Can you tell me a little bit about your background and what has inspired you? Uh, well, I'm an actor as a profession, and, and fashion-wise, I've since I can remember, I've always been in love with corsetry and bustles and period shapes and 50s dresses and I have a huge vintage collection personally and that has inspired a lot of the line that you're about to see. Well this piece actually has an influence of vintage yeah. and um, talk a little bit about the fabric and just the colors that you've chosen for this particular collection. Uh, well this piece individually is called Haberdash and uh, there's a, a stripe in a silk um, on the inside and up across the top and then the dress itself is silk taffeta and an antique cream and it's a 50s sort of waistline with the sort of French period neckline um, and the rest of the collection has hints of that. There's a lot of 50 shapes, there's a lot of glamour, um, a lot of fun patterns. It's going to be really vibrant I hope. How long have you been designing your work? How long have you, have you been a fashion designer? Oh gosh, I um, started really, really young. I started sewing and designing, believe it or not, around five years old. Um, my mother would make me sew everything by hand. She was scared of the machine. Uh, but that sort of culture, that passion over the years. Um, I didn't attend any formal design school, <clears throat> excuse me, but I did actually learn at home. I sort of practiced my trade, read every book, every video, and tried to teach myself the tax of the trade. So, so you're self-taught? I am, yes. Love it, love it, love it. Is this, is this outfit here one of your pieces? It is. This is one of my pieces from the line. This is actually from the spring collection we'll be showing tonight. So I am a sucker for lace. I think every woman should have a beautiful, beautiful lace piece. It's a staple. Every woman should have one. Every woman looks good in one. If you do, if you do it right, it'll look good. Let's see the back of the dress. Would you mind turning for us? I'm having you model now. Oh, oh it's hot, girl. You working it, girl. So tell us what has inspired you for this particular collection, because I understand, you told me a little bit on the side there yes. about you've kind of transitioned your work a little. Can you let us know? What is I did. Um, this is the first collection that's sort of day wear inspired. I come from an evening wear, an evening wear background where everything is so over the top and glamorous and sparkly, um, but this is the first one that's day wear, so it's a little bit more refined, a little bit more relaxed, uh, but it still has those feminine touches, elegant details that still make it look polished. Nicole, 
and Archie. You got it. Nicole is a fabulous accessory designer. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing here at Emerge. Oh, well, what I'm doing here at Emerge, I'm working with Giddy and I did custom pieces for her attire. And it's a country wine yard vineyard type of theme. And we use lavish colors and intertwined with wire wrapping and crystals, semi-precious stones. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. It's great inspiration. <laughs> It almost sounds like a fairy tale. Is, is the fairy tale wrapped around your neck there? Oh, these are, this is actually one of my pieces. That's a nice bold statement piece. And then I calmed it down with some leather and then just some stud earrings. <laughs> tell, us what, tell us what you're doing here at Emerge. Uh, at Emerge, I'm actually here with Bernie Martin. Well, um, I'm also an event organizer and um, I have an event coming up. So therefore I'm here having a great time with all the people here and the beautiful ladies right next to me. <laughs> it's, we, it also has a segment, of fundraising segment uh, in it as well where we try and promote education in Haiti and all over the world. Um, because part of the event is actually um, a, a segment of, of a big concert that we have coming up in December with several international artists in Haiti. Then we're going to go to Japan, Dubai, and other different countries by next year. I'm here with Aaron at the Emerge Fashion Show. Hot stuff. Aaron is hot stuff. Hey, oh, Aaron. thank you. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Oh my gosh, I'm so inspired. Color, fabric, beautiful people, wonderful ambiance. Tell us what you do. Uh, well, I was in charge of the backstage productions. Me and my partner, the other guy, Banks, we ran the whole backstage productions and we also took on with the model management and assisted Kimya with that. We ran the castings, we helped with the makeup team, we put the order of the show, sent the models out, all of the stuff backstage that you got to see outside, we produced and helped with all of that. So that's what I was in charge of today. Tell us what Director of Operations, what does the Director of Operations do? Well, I work with the model casting agent and we go through the audition process so when the women are, and men are walking through the auditions. So we pair them up with the designers and then I make sure that every designer has the proper models to fit their clothing. I'm here with Kim Roxy hey! and she's the 411. Yes, I'm the 411. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> On 9-11, I'm the 411. Okay. She's the 411 because she's got a lot going on. Yeah, so we're so excited to be here. I'm Kim Roxy, K-I-M-R-O-X-I-E. Um, and I'm here with Lamique Beauty. I'm the creative director and makeup designer. And we're so excited to be the sponsor of this fabulous show that's getting ready to happen. Uh, the Emerging Designers, and that's what we're all about. We're all about putting out new talent, letting you know what's next. That's the 411, what's next? Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection, they need you. Coming up next is a throwback interview with actor Chadwick Boseman, who stars in Black Panther, amongst other films. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. So you seem like you became like an overnight sensation doing 42 and James Brown. You know, how does it feel just, you know, doing more movies and, and your career uplifting? Uh, I, I mean, I know that I'm incredibly blessed, lucky, like that it's, you know, I'm enjoying every moment of it and just trying to make sure that, that uh, <laughs> That whatever I do is is enlightening to people, you know. You try to do something different with each role. 
And um, that's all you could do is just enjoy it and be thankful for it. Right, being part of All Star New York, how do you feel? You know, what are your feelings? What are you doing for the weekend? I don't really know. I don't really know. I mean, I, I'm definitely going to the game, going to the to the skills competitions and and, and uh, the dunk contest and all of that. But I don't know what else. You know, I, I I used to live here, so hopefully I get to see some people that I know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. So now our photo of the week is of the great Gladys Knight. It's like a before, after, after, before <laughs> kind of photo. Um, she was attending the pre-Grammy party, Clive Davis's famous pre-Grammy party. And then, you know, the internet went wild because one photo, she looks one way. And then there's another photo, she looks another way. You guys decide, comment below. Let us know what you think of the photo. Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Our motivational quote of the week is, most obstacles melt away when we make up our minds to walk boldly through them. This quote comes from Ray Polanco of State Farm Insurance, posted on LinkedIn. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. That'll do it for another great episode of What's the 411, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Next week, check out our website, what's the 411.com. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe. Subscribe. Sub subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and tune in and tag us on all the social medias. Hashtag what? What's the 411? Hashtag what? what? What's the 411? That's right. I'm Onika McLean on behalf of these lovely ladies, Julia Colliman, right? And Ramona Shoy Parker. I got that right, guys. I know. I know you're like, Onika's going to mess up. I didn't mess up. Oh, well. Until next week, thank you so much for spending your time with us. 411, who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411? The 411. What's the 411? They got the 411. We got the 411. What's the 411? They got the 411. What's the 411? What's the 411?